Good morning, friends. Welcome back to Acre Homestead. Today, Josh and I are going on a morning date. We are gonna to go to brunch and pick out our Christmas tree, and I could not be more excited about it. And it is, in fact, snowing outside. I have said this before, it, this is the fifth day I think we've had snow. None has really ever accumulated. It doesn't affect the roads or anything. But the fact that we have snow and we can enjoy that, especially during this holiday season, well, it is sticking a little bit just warms my heart. I can't believe it. The cool thing though is that because we're up on this hill, as soon as we drive about a half mile down the hill, there's no snow. So we get to enjoy it up here and we don't have to worry about it shutting down our entire city because I live in the Portland metro area and we typically down in the city don't get very much snow. And if we even get the threat of snow, schools are closed, works are closed. So I'm just really blessed and excited that up here we can enjoy it, but it's not going to just shut everything down. So because it's this beautiful blustery day, we're going to decorate for Christmas. We're also going to take care of some Christmas projects. I've got that vodka and brandy we've been infusing with the homegrown pears and apples. So after we go to brunch and we get our tree, We'll come back, decorate. We're going to take care of those Christmas projects because I'm going to give quite a bit of those, I should shut this door, quite a bit of those projects away as gifts. We also have all that fermented hot sauce that has been sitting in this refrigerator out here for, I don't know, uh, two months now. And we're going to take care of that. And unfortunately, I have some bad news on some of it that I'll show you when we get to it. But I want to take out a freezer meal so that I don't have to worry about dinner tonight. And I asked Josh, Josh, I gave him two options. You can see how well we've been filling this freezer. This is all prepared food, all homemade except for some store-bought pot stickers, which eventually we're gonna attempt to try to make ourselves. But I asked him, do you want stroganoff or do you want curry with non-bread that we're gonna make homemade from scratch today? And he said he wanted curry. So we made this the other day together and I want to attempt, let's see if I can get it. It's right here. I got our tikka masala curry out of the freezer. I do need to come out here and do some organizing, but I'm just really happy with the progress we've been able to achieve for postpartum freezer meals and food prep. I need to get all of these sheet pans out of my freezer so that we can use them in the kitchen. And then I do still need to process all of these tomatoes, but we probably won't get to that till after baby comes. I'm glad Josh chose the curry tonight because once baby comes, I don't know if I'm gonna have the, don't mind the messy garage. Josh was working on that today. He is actually, while I'm gonna be decorating for Christmas, he is going to be starting to work on the trim around all the doors again upstairs. So that's pretty exciting. But once baby comes, I don't know if I'm gonna have the energy to try to attempt to make naan for the first time. Costco sells a really good non bread. So today we're gonna to go ahead and attempt to try to make it from scratch. And then in the future, I might buy it from Costco or if it's easy enough, I might make it from scratch. So I'm gonna let this curry just sit in the sink and thaw while we go run our errands and then we'll be back to decorate for Christmas and to wrap up some Christmas projects. We just got back from brunch and running to Costco. <laughs> so we did go ahead and buy ourselves a fake Christmas tree this year. We went back and forth. We were gonna get real, and then I was considering fake, and Josh was like, no, 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 we want real. And every time we've wanted to go get a real tree, there has been super washed out, but let me show you in the couple hours we were gone. Boy, stay in here. How beautiful it is out here. And we just didn't feel like going and getting a Christmas tree a real one in this snowiness. So we thought, you know what, this year we're gonna get a fake one. We might use it for three or four years. And then when baby is a little bit older, some of my favorite Christmas memories are going and cutting down a Christmas tree. So I want to make sure we have that as a family tradition. But for the next couple years, we are going to enjoy the convenience of this Costco Christmas tree. One cool thing as well is that this Costco tree was on sale again. So we got it on sale, which I'm really happy about. 
and it's just gonna be really nice this year to not have to worry about watering it, picking up after it, disposing of it, and we can just enjoy the convenience of a pre-lit tree. So this tree is really beautiful. I did buy though at Costco this garland that's real. I think this was like $19. So I want to maybe put this around the fireplace. We will see. I've never set up a fake tree before, so I don't even really know what I'm looking at to get this thing set up. I think we're gonna put it in this back corner here. So I'm not looking at the directions. I don't even know if there are directions in here. I'm just gonna go with my gut instinct here. There's probably numbers on this box, I would assume, that would say like one, two, and three. Maybe I should look at the directions. We went with this seven and a half foot tall tree because our ceilings are nine feet. Yeah, because it's got the plug and it's got a pointy end. to a friend about this tree because she this year has two kids and she went and purchased the same tree at Costco and we were both talking that we don't have to marry ourselves <laughs> to this fake Christmas tree we can enjoy the convenience while it's here and then when we want to make those core memories of going down with the family and cutting down a Christmas tree we can still do that but in the meantime we can enjoy the beauty of a mess-free tree and a pre-lit tree. I think that's probably one of my favorite things so far about these fake Christmas trees is I don't have to string the lights and take the lights off when Christmas is over. This is gonna be a really nice treat when it comes to cleaning up Christmas this year, that is for sure. decorated and it's just going to live in this corner and we're going to decorate this mantle too. I don't do a lot when it comes to actual decorations on Christmas trees. I like them pretty plain. Just got to fluff this because it's definitely a little bit compacted from being in the box. But the fact that I don't need to worry about watering this, I can put it up and take it down whenever I want. If we <laughs> had this before, I would have had this up two weeks ago. Oh, that tile is not secure. So I'm gonna get a couple decorations on here. But first I think I'm gonna try to hang this up. Let's see, I think I have to cut that, yeah. This is nice because it's gonna smell really good and it's not gonna drop pine needles like a regular Christmas tree would drop pine needles. This real garland from Costco seemed like the perfect compromise between getting a little bit of real greenery in the house and not having to manage an entire Christmas tree. I probably will buy this again. The smell of it was incredible. And so far it hasn't been very messy, which has been awesome. Here are two of our stockings. These are some custom stockings that my high school friend made for me. She's a master knitter. I can link her down below. I commissioned her to make these two stockings for Josh and I, so I'm going to have to commission her to make a new one for new baby A, who is already here as I am recording this voiceover. I did go ahead and just go around my house and found a few candlesticks to decorate 
the mantle just to bring a little bit of height to the mantle. I'm trying to do these Christmas decorations pretty budget friendly, so we're just working with what we have. And here are just some candlesticks refreshing. I won't light these candles, but I thought it would be nice just to have a little bit of height there. I did have a little bit of extra greenery and I just threw that on the table. And you can see how beautiful that snow is still happening. What a magical day. And I am going to take off some of this artwork here on the bar cart and I'm going to get some of our um, bar cart stuff set up here. We are making progress. There were some tools that were in the sunroom area. Josh is taking care of for me, which is great. And we are gonna try to finish this Christmas area out. I like how far the bar cart is coming. We've got a little bit more work until it's done. And let me show you, <laughs> this is my one and only Christmas box that I have of Christmas decorations. And I'm probably not even gonna have to use half of it this year because the majority of the things in this box are for a real tree. And since we're not doing a real tree, I don't need to get the tree stand out, the tablecloth to protect the floors, but I do need to get our, whoop, hopefully I didn't lose a piece in there, our angel chime. This is a traditional thing Josh had growing up and I love setting this up, so we're gonna find a home for that. Hopefully all the pieces are still in there. And then I need to get my tree decorations out. So I have just some gold balls. I might, I might not put those on, I don't know. I have some Christmas crafts that we do every year. We do new crafts every year with Josh's mom. But I don't know if I'm gonna set these out this year. I think I wanna do a very minimal Christmas because that will be less for me to have to take care of. But I do need my bow. We're gonna put that on the tree. Let's see, we're probably not gonna use these stockings this year. And I wanna bring some of these Christmas lights to the hospital with me. So I need to get a couple of these out and test them to see if they work. So we can make a nice Christmassy hospital room. And then I do have some of these we might put on the tree. I normally just put one big bow on the, my tree and then the rest of it is just Christmas lights. I think I'm gonna do that this year even though it's not a real tree. My favorite thing about Christmas are Christmas lights. I absolutely love them and I can't get enough of them. I do get super inspired by people that are able to decorate their entire house and make it look super, super festive. I don't have that skill to make it look super festive without it looking cluttery and messy. So my style when it comes to Christmas decorations is gonna be very simple and minimal and try to get a little bit of the holiday cheer, but also try to keep it a little bit more low key. So that's basically my Christmas decorations in a nutshell here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take some time. Well, I still have to set that chime up and I'll show you how that chime works. That thing is really cool. Josh's family is Dutch. And if I, if I know, if I remember correctly, I think that chime is a Dutch chime or something traditional when it comes to that. I just know it's something that he's always had growing up and I really enjoyed having that be part of our Christmas tradition as well. So before I set the chime up though, I'm gonna take a second and I am going to clean up my mess. The garland did make a little bit of a mess, but since it's been up for the last two and a half weeks, it really hasn't dropped much of anything, which has been really nice as opposed to a real tree. You kind of seem to have to clean up after it on a regular basis. Now, I don't own a tree skirt. I have one that's just a piece of cloth that actually was one that we had growing up. And I did not feel like going and buying one this year, but I have this white blanket. And I thought, you know what? I think I can just use this white blanket and kind of fluff it around the bottom of this tree. And it'll look like a little bit of snow down there and we can repurpose it. And then maybe if I see a good sale on a tree skirt at the end of the season, I will pick myself up a tree skirt. But for now, that white blanket's gonna work. And I wanna create a cozy little spot for me. So I'm gonna bring over my chair so I can sit in front of the Christmas tree and I can enjoy those Christmas lights. And then here we are gonna go ahead and set up this chime if I can get it set up correctly.
So I'm going to have Josh come check out our Christmas decorations. This is about as put together I feel like this house has been so far. So come on in, Josh. Come in, guys. Come on in, guys. <laughs> you guys watch Survivor, you know that quote. Oh, what do wow. you think? Yeah, it looks really good. I think this it turned out really well. Josh is fixing the candles, which is great. We've got your okay. angel candle thing there. Yeah, it's great. Looks really put together. Good in here too. Yeah, I thought I would add the chair. I could sit there and do computer work or something, or you could sit there. Maybe we'll light a fire. We haven't had a fire in this house yet, so. I figured out what that switch was that we couldn't figure out. Is it for the fireplace? Pretty sure it was a fireplace fan. Oh, did we un... I just made it always active. Oh, but I think okay. it's heat, heat activated, so in theory that should be okay. Awesome. Well, maybe we'll make a fire tonight. That'd be kind of fun. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? So now I'm going to make myself a cup of tea. I'm going to sit in this chair for a while. That was quite a bit of up and down, up and down. I went up and downstairs probably six or seven times to get the few little things I needed to put this little area together. So we're going to have a cup of tea and then we will get going on our kitchen projects. Josh and I were about to make a fire, and then we thought, you know what? Maybe we should have the fire cleaned and slash inspected. <laughs> or not the fire, but the fireplace and the chimney before we go ahead and light a fire. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and try to find someone to hire to sweep the chimney and everything before we light it for the first time, just to be safe before we're Safe, not sorry, how's that saying go? I don't know. But I've yet to make myself a cup of tea. I sat down in that chair for about, I don't know, 45 minutes, and it was wonderful. And now I have my second wind after doing those decorations. I have three projects I wanna get done in this kitchen. First, I wanna get the non going, cause that needs to rise for at least an hour. And then we are going to finish our hot sauce for gifts. And I have some very sad news to share with you. I'm just making some ginger tea. Nothing with caffeine in it. Just something really soothing. And then we have our apple brandy, apple vodka, pear brandy, and pear vodka, I think. I have to do the sniff test because I can't remember exactly what I did. I did not label these, unfortunately. So first non, then the brandy and vodka and the hot sauce. I don't know if you can hear this. See all those bubbles? Woo! Woo! Ah! I'm just closing that really tight. I don't want that to bubble over. Look how cool that is. So this is our sriracha-ish kind of hot sauce, our fermented hot sauce. This is the same one. You can see how bubbly it is too. This has just been living in my refrigerator for months about two months. This is the one for my brother. This is the ghost pepper one. And this is the one that's really upsetting is I had the most in this jar and it's moldy on the top. So I am gonna dump this out. I'm not sure why this happened. It actually started molding in the refrigerator, which is super weird for ferments. These three have no mold, no yeast, nothing growing on the top. They're beautiful. And this one, I don't know if it's because I flipped the lid upside down and I had been touching the top of the lid that made this happen, but this, unfortunately, you can see, it's like a science experiment, it's gross, it's going down the drain. Now it's time to make our naan since we took care of that gross mess. <laughs> this looks like a pretty easy recipe. I just Googled a recipe and I can link this down below. And it seems relatively straightforward. I did measure out three fourths cup of warm water. And to this, we are going to sprinkle in one teaspoon of instant yeast. I always like to mix the yeast in with the water just so that it has a second to dissolve, even if it's instant. The recipe doesn't say to do that, but I always do. And then we're gonna add three tablespoons of Greek yogurt, one tablespoon of sugar, two cups of all-purpose flour, two tablespoons of a nice olive oil, 
and one teaspoon of salt. And we're supposed to mix all this together. And I don't feel like getting my counters dirty, so I'm going to work on kneading this dough in this bowl. So I'm going to take just a little bit more flour, sprinkle it on the top, keep that out in case I need it. And I'm gonna get in there with my hands and I'm gonna just start kneading this until a nice ball forms. I don't think I need any more flour. I changed my mind. I wasn't getting a very good kneading action in the bowl. So we're just gonna knead this on the counter for a minute. The recipe says as soon as the dough comes together, stop kneading it, so this is perfect. It does say to oil our bowl and oil the dough. We're gonna cover this and I'm gonna put it in the oven. I'm gonna take my cast iron out because we're actually gonna cook the naan in our cast iron on the stove. Put this in here with the proof setting. And I'm gonna turn the light, oh, the light is on. So we're gonna cook the naans in here after this rises. But let's go ahead and do the hot sauce for my brother. This hot sauce is for my brother for Christmas and for me, but the ghost pepper hot sauce is for my brother. So I wanna get this done before baby comes so that I know that I have his Christmas gift all put together. We are gonna use the high powered blender for this. I could do a couple different things. I could can this. I could keep it a refrigerated hot sauce. I think we're gonna keep it a refrigerated hot sauce. So it's gonna be really easy to finish. We're gonna use this bag for when we do the vodka and brandy. So I'm gonna set that aside for a second. But I do want to strain out the liquid. You know what, I'm gonna do the sriracha one first, not my brother's because his is gonna be so much spicier. I don't want all the liquid in the hot sauce. We will use some of it. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the brine. We're gonna use that to blend this up. I'm gonna strain the other one as well. Look at all that fizz. So I have yet to taste this. And there's a couple different things we could do. We could strain this, put it on the stove, cook it down, add some things to it if we wanted or not, and can it. Or we can leave it as a fresh sauce. We don't have to strain it. That is delicious. That has the most heat out of any of the hot sauces that I have made yet this year. I love, I love it. Now I have to decide what I get, I'm gonna do. It's nice and thick. I think I'm just going to keep this as a fresh fermented hot sauce. This is gonna be like a probiotic, delicious. This is gonna be more for me. I don't think I'm gonna give this to my brother. This is what I'm giving to my brother. This is so good. So what I'm gonna do with this, Oh my goodness, that's so good. The heat on that level is perfect. Some of the other hot sauces I made, they have fantastic flavor, but they're not spicy. And I love spice. So all we're gonna do to finish out this hot sauce is pour it into this clean half gallon jar. I'm gonna put a new lid on this. This is gonna go in my outside fridge for refilling this jar. This jar is going to go in my inside fridge, and this is the one I'm going to use to top on my food. A few of you have warned me <laughs> that once baby comes, I might not be able to eat so much spicy food. So if that is truly the case, because baby doesn't end up liking it, then I can gift it to somebody. But ferments, these should last a long time in the fridge because they are already fermented and they didn't have any mold issues. Usually 
if that's going to happen, it would have already happened like it did with those other ones. So this brine, you could save this and use it for recipes, for flavoring things. I'm just going to dump this out and I'm going to go ahead and strain my brother's ghost peppers. This ghost pepper one had onions, garlic. That is strong. And I also added carrots to it versus the one, this one just had onions, garlic, and pepper, and salt, of course. The ghost peppers smell sweet, unlike the jalapenos. Those were red jalapenos. But I know these are scary hot. Scary hot. That's why I added some carrots to it, because I wanted some balance of flavor on that. Add a little bit of the brine. You could always add more brine, so I'm going to start with that. I won't be surprised if I have to start coughing because it's so hot. I'm wondering if I should try this. I think I'm going to. Am I crazy? Well, I just had a huge coughing fit and that took me a second to catch my breath again. So I don't think it would be wise for me to taste that ghost pepper hot sauce. So I'm just going to have to tell my brother that hopefully it's good. It might be... The flavor might not be good, it might need more sugar, it might need, I don't know. But I'm gonna give it to him and he will enjoy it, hopefully. And if not, I will keep you informed of how he feels about it. But I think I'm gonna leave this as a nice, fresh, fermenty hot sauce as well. So I'm just gonna take it and pour it into this mason jar. We'll stick this in the fridge. It smells good. It smells sweet. It's so interesting to me how different peppers have such different flavor. I like the heat of habaneros, but I don't actually like the flavor of habaneros. I love the flavor of jalapenos, and sometimes I wish jalapenos were a little bit hotter than they are. So here are our three hot sauces, or two I should say. These are our kind of like sriracha, but like a fresh fermenty version of sriracha. I feel myself wanting to cough again, and here is our ghost pepper. So we're gonna get lids on these. I'm just gonna reuse some lids. This one's gonna go in my outside fridge. This one's gonna go inside so I can enjoy it. This one's gonna go in the outside fridge until Christmas when I gift this to my brother. So hopefully he likes it. So I went ahead and I just threw in the dishwasher those half gallon jars that had the hot sauce in it. I wanna use those jars for storing my apple brandy and vodka. So I'm gonna run this dishwasher right now. And there's some other dishes in it, so it's basically full at this point. We'll strain all of those once this is clean so that we can put those into clean jars. And then we're gonna get our curry going right now though. This is our tiki masala that we made when we did those freezer cooking meals. I poked a hole on accident in the bag, so it's leaking just a little bit. It's still basically frozen. So I'm just gonna get this in this Dutch oven to continue to thaw in here, because this is where we are going to warm it up when we go to heat up our dinner. I just got a couple more things out for dinner. I'm gonna put the lid on our curry. I grabbed out a pint of chicken or turkey. I'm not sure which one it is, but it'll go great at dinner. And then I grabbed a bag of frozen green beans. This is a 10 ounce bag. And I'm just going to open this and put this in with the curry. And we'll let that thaw along with the curry. That way I can have the vegetable, everything in one pot. And then in the instant pot, I'm gonna cook up some basmati rice. So I'm gonna put that in there. I'm not as comfortable cooking rice in the Instant Pot. I usually cook it in a rice cooker, but I'm considering getting rid of my rice cooker and just having an Instant Pot so that I can just have one appliance. So I'm gonna to try to get better at cooking in my Instant Pot. So I just put a little bit of salt in there. Okay, got it plugged in. Every time I cook rice in the Instant Pot, I have to look up the cooking directions because I can never remember. 
Yes, equal parts rice to water, which is what I did. When I use my rice cooker, I always put a little bit more water. And then it says cook on high pressure for three minutes with a 10 minute natural release. So we're gonna put it on manual. Dinner is not gonna be ready for a couple hours, so we're just gonna let that go. We've got our chicken. I'm gonna take care of this. We're waiting for our dough to rise and the dishwasher to be done so we can strain and we can use those jars for the brandy and vodka. We're still waiting on our dishwasher, but Josh came in and told me he is hungry. We haven't eaten since brunch. So we're gonna get going on our naan. Now this looks relatively easy. I kept reading the recipe and I think we should be able to make this pretty easily. We'll see. I'm gonna get my curry going because it still needs to be warmed up. And I'm gonna get my cast iron warming while we shape our dough. The recipe says to start it on medium high heat. And then as you cook them, you might need to lower the temperature a little bit. This recipe is supposed to make six non breads. And it says to put a good amount of flour on your surface. This probably could have rose a little bit more, but Josh is hungry, so we're gonna get going on dinner. We're gonna cut it into six pieces. And it's said to roll it out to about a quarter inch thick, or an eighth of an inch thick, actually. Maybe you should have doubled this recipe. I guess I could make more for leftovers so we could have it fresh because it was really easy to put together. As long as these cook up nicely, this was so easy to make. They are not exactly circle or square. They are just whatever shape they end up being, which is fine. But I'm glad I made rice too. I was thinking, do we really need rice and naan? But yes, because this recipe doesn't make very many of them. And Josh is doing something so special for me. He is been working all day since we got home from brunch to clean out the garage so that I can park my car in the garage. Because of all this snow, he wants me to be able to park my car in the garage. And I think he's gonna try to get his car in the garage too, but all the construction stuff's been there in there, so we haven't been able to. So that is just so sweet of him to take his Sunday to kind of make my life, quality of life a little bit easier especially knowing that we're gonna get so much more snow up here. I really appreciate him taking the time to do that. So I hope he gets to enjoy a really nice dinner. Okay, I'm gonna stir that up. That's our green beans and our curry. And then I also did melt a couple tablespoons of butter because that's what the recipe said. When these noms come out of the oven, we're gonna brush them with some butter. So I'm gonna get a plate with a dish towel on it and I'm gonna turn my oven on to 200 degrees and you know what maybe we'll turn it on to 175 so when these come off the stove we're gonna pop them in the microwave or pop them in the oven so they can stay nice and warm my cast iron starting to smoke I'm gonna turn it down just a little bit oh I forgot it said to go like this to get any excess flour off so I can cook it looks like three at a time. Oh wow, these cook fast, okay. That is still raw inside, in the inside, but it's starting to brown. Well, these are cooking, I wanna show you the curry. Curry makes a beautiful freezer meal. I make a whole pot to where I have this whole pot full, and then I can divide it and make smaller portions so we can enjoy curry for dinner, and it freezes and thaws perfectly. So you could add whatever kind of veggie you want to this. So I just added green beans because that's what I have. I'm also gonna go ahead while the nons are cooking and I'm gonna get some chicken or turkey, whatever this is in there. I'm gonna go ahead and add the broth too. That'll just stretch the curry a little bit. Okay, I need to turn this way down because they're not cooked all the way in the inside and it's browning a little too much. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna take this out so I don't think these are gonna cook fully on here, so I'm gonna turn my oven up to 350 degrees. If I don't get these fully cooked on the stove, then I will finish cooking them in the 350 degree oven. That's the problem I had last time I made them. I couldn't get them fully cooked on the stove, 
and then they were kind of raw. But I think technique, just finish them in the oven. Or maybe I, maybe I should, the next round I'm gonna flatten them out a little bit thinner. We'll try that. Maybe I'm trying to have them be too thick. So this next round will make thinner ones. So they're starting to cook, but I can definitely feel that this is still doughy. Yeah, I think I had these way too thick. You can turn this down now. And our rice is done. Perfect. So my oven is preheated to 300 degrees. And I don't want, oh, see that's too dark. I don't want these to get any darker. So I'm gonna take these off the cast iron and we are going to brush them with butter. They are not done cooking. I can already tell you that. But we will not let these go to waste. What we're gonna do is get these lovely and soft with butter and then we are going to finish them right in the oven. And I'm gonna turn this way, 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 way down, all the way down. And we're gonna put our really thin nons in here now and see if we can get a better cook on these with them being a lot thinner. Okay, I can already tell that's better. So thinner is better. So I ripped off a piece and they are basically done. I wanted to give it a little taste test just to make sure it was done all the way through. So I'm gonna add a little butter. I'm just gonna add butter to one side here. And I'm gonna put these in the oven. The ones in the oven are done now. And I'm going to turn the oven off so that these can just stay warm. And we'll cook our last one. Definitely, definitely, definitely want to make them thinner than thicker. I'm gonna turn the stove off. I just went out to tell Josh dinner's ready and I have to go show you what he's been working on since I'm pretty sure you saw how bad the garage was this morning. I almost shed a tear when I went out there because he's been working so hard on this. It's incredible. This whole area was just filled with boxes and a freezer. We got a new freezer that we need to put downstairs. We brought one of the old freezers that was left from the previous owner at our last house up here and it's probably from the 70s. It's old. it's old and we don't really trust it. So we got a new one, but we just haven't brought it downstairs yet. So that was here. All the tools were in here from all these projects we've been working on. He hung up a few things here, but his plan is to eventually clear all this. I think his car's gonna go here. My car's gonna go here so that I can get the car seat out and I'm not opening my car door into his car door to get the car seat out. So, wow, thank you so much for taking your Sunday to do this. Happy to. He There's worked, yeah. So we still have a bunch of projects upstairs that he's gonna start working on trim. We actually, after brunch today, we went to Lowe's and picked up some final, picked up some final things that we needed so that he can start those projects. And that was his goal today, was to start that, but he switched his focus and wow, this is gonna be a quality of life change right here especially with all the snow we've been getting. So dinner's ready. Do you want to eat right now? Yeah. Okay, let's go eat. I want you to, you want to taste the naan and the curry? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to do a taste test and have him taste the naan and curry, but let's just look at that. Woohoo! Wow, thank you again, Josh. I really appreciate that. So while I pull together dinner, Josh is going to pull the cars into the garage. These are the naans that were really thick and they are cooked through now. They're a little bit browned and they're not perfect. These ones are way, way, way better. So definitely roll them out thinner than you think. Oh, they're hot, Ooh, hot, hot, hot. So I wanna get them into this towel to keep them nice and warm and soft. Josh just pulled the cars in the garage and we measured how much snow and there's three and a half inches of snow out there, which is crazy. So I'm gonna dish up his dinner so that he can come in and eat, and I'm gonna eat too, but I wanna change before I eat, but we're gonna do a taste test. Some basmati rice on the bottom, and then we're gonna put some yummy curry. I need a bigger, I think I need a bigger ladle to ladle that out. I tasted one of the green beans, and they're perfect, perfectly soft. The apple brandy and vodka, and pear brandy and vodka, we're gonna wait until tomorrow. <laughs> I don't feel like straining those. The dishwasher is still running 
and I want to use those half gallon jars in order to put them into it. So it's only five o'clock now, but I'm a little tired. And so the kitchen's basically clean and we're just gonna taste this and then call it a night. I'm excited for you to try this. I'm really excited too. I love me some naan. So look at that. So I'm gonna change before I eat, but I wanna taste this naan with the curry. I haven't tasted it yet, the curry. Oh and wow. The texture is like perfect. Is it yeah, good? it's really good texture. It's like got the chewiness of naan. It, 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 well, it's not, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> frankly, it's not. You could have fooled me and you could have told me you picked this up from somewhere. I would have believed it. It's really good. Mm. And the curry is really good too. Nice work. The curry is so good. The chew on the naan. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure if I let it rise long enough, but I think that's fine. That is so good. It's perfect. Mm. Okay. Thanks, son. You're welcome. That's really good. We're going to really enjoy that. I'm going to go change, get comfy, sit down, relax, enjoy a nice dinner. Thank you for hanging out with us today. We've got some Christmas cheer in this house. Normally, I put my Christmas tree up two weeks before now, and I'm just glad it's up now. we got some Christmas projects done. A couple more we're going to finish tomorrow. And I'm just really grateful you took time out of your day to spend time with me. I hope you're having a great day. And if you like this video, I can pop a couple more here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. And friend, I cannot wait to see you next time. Have a great night.